I was getting into all these businesses and trying to kind of get rich quick. What was the hardest day of your life? The vast majority of people, what they do is they are pursuing things. Rise and shine, it's espresso time. I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. I wake up every morning. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael. I'm a little sick, but this channel was created to help you overcome the number one challenge that is holding you back a lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know there's something more inside you too. You have Michael Jordan level talent at something. So let's start your day off right together. Grab your coffee and sip on today's message from Dan Locke. Also, if you want to have more confidence, check out my 254 series. They're free. The links to join are in the description below. Remember this, your business is always a reflection of you. After you practice martial arts, you develop this natural self-confidence. Not cockiness, but you develop this natural self-confidence. There's a problem with young people. You're not good at anything. Oh, I'm so good. No, tell me the truth. You're not good at anything. What was the biggest challenge when I was starting out as an entrepreneur? I was getting into all these businesses and trying to kind of get rich quick, trying to make money quickly. How can I, how can I make some, some fast money? And I was always looking for external factors that is this opportunity, is that business or is that relationship that is going to make me successful, that is going to help me to build a successful business. And when I was looking for external factor to help me become successful, I was never successful. I believe to become successful, to build a good business, you always need to look within. You need to think of, you always have to be a part of that equation, that you have to take responsibility. And at the time, just like most people, I was pointing fingers, I was blaming everybody else for my failures. It's the economy, it's the customers, it's, it's my competition, it's this, and it's always somebody else's fault except mine. Until I made that switch, once I figure out that business is actually about a few things, a few key things, such as selling a product, selling a service in exchange of money. It's, it's what commerce is all about. What was the hardest day of your life? So I run an online mastermind group for entrepreneurs who are trying to grow their businesses and I recently challenged them to make a video about what the hardest day of their lives were and one of my members, Jen, who runs a copywriting business, submitted a video that really moved me. She got really emotional in the video and I thought that I would share it with you guys to one, lend some support to her, but also two, I think there's some lessons in there that you could probably relate to. So I'm gonna roll the clip over to you, Jen. Hi, I'm Jen from You So Much and I was challenged by my mastermind group to make a video about the most difficult day that I've had. Um, and when I got this challenge, I was a little bit nervous because um, I couldn't help but think about a video that I made that was basically on that day. I actually captured it in video and I have been tentative to put it up here on YouTube because it was a pretty vulnerable moment for me. Um, but the reason why I actually captured it on video is because that I was always taught from my mentor to capture things in the moment, right? And I was totally thinking to myself, well, I'm sure that as entrepreneurs, if you are out there, you've been in this situation where you were totally devastated by something that happened and you just sort of felt like giving in and giving up. And that's kind of how I felt. And so what basically happened was I, um, as you know, I quit my job a few months ago to start my own copywriting business. And the first couple months, things kind of weren't going very well. And one of the reasons why is because I didn't just quit my job, I actually moved out of my house. Um, I was having some personal difficulties at home. And so I decided to make a change, obviously a pretty big change, two big changes at the same time. And so it was, I didn't anticipate how difficult it would be to manage, um, you know, the emotional difficulties that was going on with me personally, along with starting a new business. Obviously I didn't really anticipate what that was gonna be like. And on top of that, I sort of was 
was trying to do it all on my own, that was probably one of the biggest mistakes that I made was, you know, besides leaning on a few very close friends of mine, I really sort of was like, I can do this. I can do it without asking for help or to even, I hardly even hardly told friends what was going on with me. And, um, that's probably the one thing that I learned the most was to reach out to other people and get support and collaborate with other people to help make success happen. I sort of decided consciously to make a big change and to start doing more things for myself with other people and ask for help. And so I had set up a meeting that was going to really help me out. And I was really ready for this meeting. I was super excited to, um, you know, make some big changes and really step up. And so I prepared, I prepared for this meeting and for various reasons, the meeting just completely fell apart. And I was just devastated. I was completely devastated. And the culmination of things that had gone wrong and me feeling isolated and alone, I was just really hoping this one meeting was just going to completely help my business, which is, uh, you know, you know, unrealistic as well. But it was just, I was just so upset because it was kind of a symbol of a lot of things that had gone wrong for me over the past couple of months. So here it is. Is, uh, that moment that I captured in video and um, maybe you can relate with that moment yourself. I hate it when things go wrong, like everything goes wrong <laughs> and you did everything to prepare for it, you know? You're all excited about something and then it goes wrong and it sucks. Anyway, I just thought I'd capture that moment because I know how hard it is <laughs> when you are an entrepreneur and you're just trying to do it all on your own and <laughs> You want everything to go right and you work really hard when you have time set aside for something and it just doesn't happen. <sighs> I'm just pissed about it because I was so excited because I want to make some major progress in my business and it, like, I just know this would have helped. <sighs> and maybe it's going to just remember that I'm look back and see what I could have done better and <sighs> let myself feel frustrated because that's all I can do is be frustrated right now and then I can move on and go kick ass. Okay, that's it. So as you can tell, uh, I was pretty upset and, um, but at the end I just like, I knew I wasn't just going to give in. I was going to make the most of it. And, um, I'm wondering if you've ever had a moment like that too, where you just kind of felt like throwing in the towel. I'd love to hear your story. If you have one, please share it in the comments below and, um, hope you too are going out there and kicking some ass. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope there's something in there that you can relate to. And I'm hoping that you can do two things. One, show some support for Jen. Leave a comment below, let her know that you support her. You can go check out her channel, uh, which is much on YouTube. She posts regularly to her channel as well. And two, I'd love to know what the hardest day of your life was, if you wanna leave it in the comments below, because I think that other entrepreneurs who are watching and see that comment, that could help inspire them to keep going because nobody talks about how hard it is as an entrepreneur. Uh, we only talk about all the good things. You see it in the magazines and the articles about people making millions of dollars. Nobody talks about how hard it is. So support Jen, leave a comment, subscribe to her channel, and also tell me about the hardest day of your life in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. Continue to believe, and I'll see you soon. The vast majority of people, what they do is they are pursuing things. They derive their power by what they have in the world. They want they measure success by more money and a larger house and a faster car and more social status. But if you look at the so-called great ones, the history makers who have shaped humanity, they really are in an alternate universe or, in a, or another orbit. They're really not fueled by the things that most people are chasing. When I look at a Nelson Mandela, for example, what I've realized is through their interior work, you know my four interior empires, mindset, heart set, health set, and soul set. And so through his interior work to build his interior, in, internal character, Nelson Mandela got to a level of maturity that most people just don't get to. Why? Because most people are so outer focused and building exterior lives and it's not so hip and cool and stylish anymore to build vast and undefeatable interior lives. But he did. And maybe it was a lot of his time through the suffering of 27 years of incarceration. Maybe it was the 18 years that he spent in isolation on Robben Island. The point really is, 
through his personal excavation, through his reflection, through his prayer, through his contemplation for so many years, he built a vast interior reservoir of strength and creativity and true versus fake power that created an inner life of incredible maturity. And so the first point really is do whatever it takes to build a life of such maturity where it's not about your ego, but it's about lifting the world. And that's incredibly powerful because if you base your power on things, should you lose those things, you lose your power. You're in a really vulnerable place. But if you derive your power and your self-worth and your sense of self from who you are, your moral authority, your sense of creativity, your, your ability to love yourself, your knowledge of the fullness of the gifts that you were born into, if that's where your identity comes from, then your world could fall apart and you still stay, stay strong. So first point, work on your maturity level so you get to a place where it's not about me, it's about we. Work on your maturity so you're not deriving your strength in the world from external things, but you're getting it from your internal uh, character or your internal life. Hi, this is Dan Locke. If you're a fan of Evan's work, if you want to know exactly how to model my success, I want to invite you to join me for a special online training. All you have to do is click on the link below. You can join me for absolutely no charge. So click on the link below and I will see you in class. If you want to know how to be more productive like Dan Locke, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. We're not designed to do that. Our brain and all that, we actually design the way that we work as more like a, like a sprint.